Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. I don't know how I did it, but I uh, somehow sent uh, my death grip through the uh, monitor to Oscar, who got the death grip, and uh, uh, will not be uh, joining us because he has, unlike me, he has a fever today. He should have so, rinsed out his windscreen. Uh, Mac, are you, and you're up at uh, Podville. Um, I is am. There, is, how is the health status of your fellow uh, employees at Podville today? Are we doing all right or what? Well, no one's here yet, so. so they um, could all be well, dead? Well, they could, Yep. I mean, who knows? The whole half the world could be. Was there anything uh, yesterday that was indicative no. of perhaps a uh, massive virus sweeping through the uh, hallways? I no, I didn't hear any sniffling or anything like that. Okay. All right. The traditional yeah. Rob Ford sniffle? <laughs> no. Does he have a like traditional that. sniffle? No. no. I'm just making things up now. No. Um, okay. Welcome oh, Mike, to the Mike, I just I just what? realized something. Hold on. What? I don't like when our glasses match. So I'm going to okay. switch. That's okay. Now, see, now you've spotlighted it. So, I mean, it's, well, no, it I doesn't mean, really matter. Better, better. Now we don't look so much. Now people can tell us apart. Very nice. <laughs> um, thank you. Welcome to the uh, Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. Uh, yeah. We're here today for a an example of, uh, and I, I, I don't want to wait for this. I want to get right to it because uh-huh. yesterday on the show, we teased that uh, Mac is a Rubik's Cube baron. That yes. he is really skillful at it and that he's good at it. So I think that, uh, you know, no waiting. I want to see, uh, I don't know anything about Rubik's Cubes. I'm not really, you know, I know what they looked like. I know sure. they were uh, invented during my lifetime, which pretty much now, as far as things that we know, everything was invented during my lifetime. As we <laughs> sat down to watch uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer the other night. Oh, and by the way, all right, Mac, before, Mac, whenever you want to make your way in, feel free to make your way in okay. to uh, the studio. Um, I just loved sticking it to CBS the other night because I now have technically, <laughs> there goes the shot, I, know, I have technically uh, cut the cord and I now rely on my television from the god of YouTube. So I am yes. a YouTube TV streaming television person. And I'm still getting used to it. It's still not uh it's not completely easy to uh get to navigation like, uh, is like tough, old yeah. TV and, and as far as uh I don't really record as many things as I used to, but it's got a DVR feature so I can go back and look at something on a football game if I happen to see it. And uh so my wife who, uh, being 20 years younger than I am, 21 years younger than I am, comes in and she's um, she's really, really psyched that we're going to sit down, I think, was it Monday night? I think it was Monday night. Yeah, okay. Monday night, and watch Rudolph the Red-Nosed uh, Reindeer on CBS. Yeah, Because they promote it on CBS. And so we go to Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer on the local CBS affiliate, and we turn it on, and it says streaming not supported for this program. So it was, for whatever reason, CBS telling me that even though I was on the channel on YouTube, I could not watch uh, my Rudolph. And then I remembered ah. that because this is such a beloved, and I, I it's not beloved by me, but it's beloved by... Carla and Michael, they love this. I've got I've done half hours talking about Rudolph the Red Nose. It's a very cruel. broken it's a broken it's story. It's totally it broken. And Mac, maybe I shouldn't have called you now, but that's okay. Just sit tight. Are you okay? I'm fine. That's good. You uh, look nice. very unflappable Thank and, you. and fine. <laughs> Let me say this that Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer, there is no more uh inhuman <laughs> Christmas story. Than Rudolph, the the levels of bigotry, <laughs> cruelty, amen, preach, naked <laughs> hostility, yes, you know, right off the bat. Oh, I know. Uh, you know, the, the Santa comes into where Rudolph and uh, 
Donner and Mrs. Donner have had Rudolph and find out uh, that he's got a red nose. And it's like, oh, I don't know if I'll be able to. You know, <laughs> F you, Santa. You know, where's your inclusiveness? Yeah, he's right? all, all about the, the messages, bottom line. He's all just... the messages that we are supposed to share with our children today are missing from Rudolph. You know, <laughs> even uh, I get a prickly vibe from Burl Ives as the voice of the snowman. Because <laughs> you know what Burl Ives is all about. Right. <laughs> uh, but if you if you look at the uh, the core belief system of uh, yes. yeah, let me let me I'm digressing I'll, I'll no get to I don't this see a, a digression at all. We went to where I had on my Amazon Prime account. I have Rudolph already purchased, uh -huh. so I'm here to tell CBS. CBS, the only thing you succeeded in doing, yes. or whoever the uh, powers that be, Rankin Bass. <laughs> Yes. Or whoever the producers are that it are is. getting their royalties. The only thing that was successful was I didn't sit through the uh, horrible CBS commercials where they've stretched 28 minutes of content into an hour show. Yeah, they have. That's it. That's what I so, – so I watched it. We watched it. But getting back to the content on Rudolph. Yes. So you've got the lack of inclusivity, you know. Right. Where, where the coach – we're the coach of I a, think it's Blitzen, isn't it? Is the coach? I don't know what his name is, but he is a prick. He is. I mean, a ridiculous, where he comes on and he says, you know, wow, Rudolph, Rudolph, <laughs> you won't be able to play in any more reindeer games. Just blatantly, you know? Surprised that Rudolph didn't go jump off a cliff somewhere when that happened. I know. Because, because he was so cruel to, uh, to Rudolph. You know, and thank God for Clarice. Who told Rudolph he was cute, but yeah. then he's ostracized I'm along cute. with the I, I'm cute, I'm cute, I'm cute, and then the and then the uh, the mud or clay. Yeah. It's, well, it's my, claymation. I think, we, I think we all know what it was meant to be. There's eight reindeer living up there. Mm -hmm. It's it's long. It's reindeer scat. Okay, it you is. said it. I didn't say it last year, but it's reindeer scat. That's on it. But it's so cruel. It and is. then Rudolph leaves. Because oh, you're totally is... leaving out the chastising of the uh, the dentist elf. Well, the Could... dentist Her Hermie is it Herbie or Hermie? It changes within the special. I, I believe so. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna call him Herbie. Okay, Herbie the dentist. And I want to be a dentist. He's a little <laughs> dink anyway. Well, he, I don't he, like. He's Herbie. an enabler. I, I, no, <laughs> if Herm if Herbie had that attitude, I'd be with the uh, foreman. Uh, the elves. Oh, the where, head elf, you know, the fat elf. You're an elf, and you're you're studying to be a dentist, and not not working on toys. <laughs> Who wants to you know put his hands in a stinky mouth as opposed to producing wonderful gifts for children? So I don't get that to start with. But I think they had to have a counterbalance to yes. uh, Rudolph and uh, and his ostracization. Yes. Uh, in the community, so somehow they both get uh, kicked out. And they venture off, and then they meet a what, what best could be described as a deranged, uh, <laughs> shell shocked. Yes, to use a World War II Yukon, term, Yukon Cornelius. Yukon Cornelius, who is a failed uh, entrepreneur, who uh, is not successful in doing anything, and then they try to tie it all together. And the only thing, <laughs> the only thing that saves Rudolph is the fact that there's a blizzard and Santa says, oh, with that nose, you can, yeah. I can use you as a glorified light bulb. And I would, if I was Rudolph, I would say, screw you, Santa. Go to hell. I, you know, you are said the Christmas <laughs> is canceled. Christmas <laughs> is canceled because of your bigotry and lack of inclusiveness and the way you ostracize the elf without getting the counseling for him that he probably needed to switch careers. And by the way, not to mention, you know, if you're going to have it, why not have a dentist up there? Yeah. Why not have a dentist up there? Well, they're living on candy. I mean, they need it. Have a dentist up there that can repair the teeth of all those claymation yeah. figures. Mm -hmm. uh, not to mention, imagine what Mrs. Claus's mouth probably smells. It probably smells like a rat hole. You yeah. know, when she, with, uh, you know, with the amount of sugar and spice <laughs> yeah. and everything nice. You know, it's not all nice, Mike. That she's uh, put in her mouth. I just... I find it abhorrent. Mike, and, I have a tape uh, I'd like to play it, here. I think I think this is applicable here. Uh, I'm playing it blindly, but I think this. Can I do my in. impression uh, of the oh, please do. Yeah, though? Please. Yeah. We're in the land of misfit toys. That's the claymation <laughs> that's, that I was doing. And that's Sorry. probably the weakest link with yeah. King Moon Racer, the lion. 
uh, King Moonracer. Every <laughs> child wants to be a toy. And then, of course, I do the, uh, you know, this is why I think my career has essentially stalled due to the fact that uh, the only impressions I do are the obscure ones, like the, ja- the uh, Charlie in the Box. Yes. Nobody wants a Charlie in the Box. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, Rudolph. <laughs> and I'm the king with the... And that's another bad thing. I you know. know? He, he's, because, he's well, King Moonracer is like, oh, he, what? He's not a misfit. What he's done is he's taken the the, the oppressed. The and infirm, made the own, Rob, Yeah, The infirm, and made their, the deformed. And made his own society where he can feel like a king. But yeah. a king of what? You know? King of what? And yeah. God knows what he does in that castle to all the, you know, miss, the like the train with the square... Square wheels. Yeah, a train. Pathetic. Right, Mike, so what are you going to play for us? I, I think this will be applicable here. Now, don't any of you worry your heads about Santa. Mrs. Claus will have him plenty f***ed up by Christmas Eve. <laughs> Not happy in my work, I guess. What? I just don't like the f- toys. No, well, if that's all. What? You don't like to f- toys? No. Herbie <laughs> doesn't like to f- Toys! Do you mind telling me what you do on a Well, sir, someday I'd like to a dentist. <laughs> That's when all the new fawns come out with their folks to meet the other new fawns. And to be that's I didn't, not okay. I didn't really do the editing there. I'm not sure uh, <laughs> what happened. I with think it. that might have been a if you ever spin it on maybe Cinemax. That's the version you get. Uh, so anyhow, uh, the uh, the idea of CBS for some reason yeah. telling me I couldn't stream and I had it already purchased. I uh, I have it. It is in my stuff. Yeah. And there's very limited uh, content in my stuff. Do you have a Do you have an Amazon? Prime, yeah, I have a few things that like, I purchased. Yeah. Stuff that, that's in there. I don't have a lot, and it's weird. I, but you see, the, if the it was I Rudolph, because of my kids growing up and the age they grew up in, I have a lot of that stuff on DVD before streaming because I would buy it so we could watch it. So DVD is an antiquated, I mean, for God's sakes, get Well, with what the, do you want me to do, just throw it away? Yes. Why? Yes. No. All the DVDs I have are gone. All the DVDs I have are gone in the wind and that's why you're paying for rudolph the red nose but there's nothing you can't get digitally it's time to do that and by the way dvds dvds will disintegrate ultimately ultimately they're they're not something you can keep yeah well i just see there you go that's your answer yeah well that they don't that we do commercials you don't think for for legacy box rob that's the whole reason but you don't think for a moment those DVDs are going to disintegrate before I disintegrate. They'll outlive me. That's all I need. I know that if, uh, you know, the, I have had people talk to me about DVDs that they just don't have the proper shelf life. And, you know, with temperature variants. <laughs> <laughs> yes. With global warming. <laughs> yes, Bill Nye. <laughs> with global warming. Rudolph. <laughs> No one can store a DVD in a hot attic. All right. Anyway, so uh, anyway, I'm sorry I have it on DVD. Well, no, you. It's no. See, that's passive aggressive. Right well, it is because that's you being your dickish passive no, aggressive. No, no, that's with passive me. aggressive. Because I'm what sorry you're I have it on me. DVD. I'm you sorry are for something. So your logic that's Rob Spiewak Max saying I'm sorry for something I don't have to be sorry for. No, Mike, I that's am being passive aggressive that. because I'm sorry you your, feel ar- that way. your argument is flawed. Because I do flawed. have it I, is I do a commercial that says that 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 tape and DVDs and albums and all that. Uh, it's better to keep that stuff where it's not, uh, you know, where it's in the in well, the in, ether. Well, until I need to stream, well, I use a nineteen twenties term in the ether. In the ether, that's exactly <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I like mine DVDs, but you know so, what? I do sometimes stream things that I have on DVD. I like yeah. the convenience of it. But you can but, also have you know stuff that's just there digitally. Yeah. Now, yeah. if Amazon goes belly up, I might you be see? screwed. There you go. But, but anyway. Then uh, how are you going to watch all your episodes of Good Eats? Oscar will not be here today. <laughs> I will be doing the entire show with him. Uh, so be aware of Hi, uh, that Hi, my name fact. is Rob, yes. That's mm-hmm. Rob over there with his bad lighting. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's fine. No, it oh, looks fine. Now. It looks good. It come looks good now. on you. Why would you? Why would you bring that up even? Because the, because the, Mac does he not look like a light bulb today with his white shirt he on does. with his light colored what, shirt? It was better. It was better before the show. But that's so. Don't worry. It's about weird. It. It's fine. Yeah. You Maybe look great. I'm seething with anger because no, I of think this whole DVD. So thing. much white skin that is just <laughs> reflecting uh, every mm. ounce of light. Um, I Mac, am as God made me. I yes. know you are. 
<laughs> I know you are. Uh, so, oh, by the way, Rob will be uh, fruit caking coming this, this weekend. Week. He's yeah. gathering the nuts. And, uh, I was very, out all very, last night in the back. Very, very excited uh, about this. So, yesterday on the show, we found out that uh, Michael McIntosh, and hi, Mac, how are you? Good, how are you? Good to see uh, the mellow Mac who is uh, in here today. And Mac was a skilled Rubik's Cube solver. Now, uh, I don't know much about the history of Rubik's Cubes, but did you inform me there's some ridiculous statistic for a world record for solving a Rubik's yes. Cube? Well, it wasn't just a uh, world record. Well, Mac knows the overall world record for a controlled uh, environment. This uh, Rubik's solving Cube solving brought to you by... Charles Chips. <laughs> it's my coffee mug today. Charles Chips. That may, uh, that may or may not have come from the uh, CB. CB? Mm -hmm. Cracker Barrel? Cracker Barrel. I yeah. love Cracker Barrel. Way to figure What's it out. What's so nice, Mike, is they have a yes. gift shop to entertain you while you wait for your table. Not for 40 minutes, though. I won't wait for 40 minutes after one football game. See ya! Right. Uh, anyway, uh, so what, I know what that stats here's what do you, you need have? To know, what you need to know about the Rubik's Cube. It was invented yeah. by Erno Rubik. And there were in is the this 19th... really true? A guy? Yeah, yeah, Erno. Erno. What kind of name is Erno? I think he he was European. Was he not, Mac? That I don't know, unfortunately. Okay, well, <laughs> Erno Rubik invented the Rubik's cube. <laughs> it was an exceptionally hot toy in the '80s. There were even Rubik's cube cartoons on TV that were horrible, but still they marketed it to that level. And recently, this month, uh, Guinness cited an official world's record. A guy named Sam Seraki, he's 17 years old, was in free fall doing a skydive. And while skydiving, solved the Rubik's Cube in 28.25 seconds. Now, Mac was surprised it took that long because the overall world record is how long, Mac? About four seconds. And you see... Well, I don't... I, you can't even get your hands on the thing in four seconds. How would that... So I'll ask the, you, the Rubik's Cube expert, how could you possibly do it in four seconds so like the rules is they will have a predetermined the rules scramble. Are? yes the rules are that there will be a predetermined no scramble tense anymore yeah go ahead all right and they'll cover it then the the player the person who will be unscrambling it will pick it up get like five seconds to view the rubik's cube okay put it back down have to start with your hands on your table you start scrambling, put your hands back on the table, and that's how it times it. Okay, it times so it based on your hands. how important to you, how important to you is the idea? The, so the, the time only starts after he's viewed it. Yes, you get And to been able it. to pick it up and look at all sides. Yes. Then he puts his hands down on the table. And but are they completely random the way? Is there a method of setting up the Rubik's Cube prior to somebody solving it? Yes. When they're doing like, these it, uh, these tests, a computer scrambles it because there are some scrambles that look scrambled but can be solved in like f f four or five minutes. So you, so the real Rubik's cube experts can look at the thing and go, "Oh, I know what I'm going to do with this." And so the guy that does it in four seconds does. You mentioned yesterday luck, right? That there's yes. luck involved. Yes. And I'm yes. sorry, I keep pointing at you. That's all right. It makes <laughs> you it more mentioned exciting. yesterday. So <laughs> yes, the, the, there is so a luck lot plays of luck. A, a role, in, a lot of luck involved. A lot of luck in terms of getting. If you need, if you want a world record time, you need very good luck. Okay. Which means because how Rubik's cube is solved is you solve one side, then you solve the middle layer, and then you solve the other side, and it's all based on algorithms, and you can skip steps if you get a lucky cube, which okay. just saves time. Now, doesn't the computer that pre-mixes it up, doesn't that computer oversee and can it pr project a lucky cube or not? It Well, it depends on what color you're starting with. Oh, okay. Like, you can start with yellow, and it'll be much harder if you, than if you started with white. Now, Do you have a color uh, that you start with all the time? Uh, I typically look at it and see which one's mostly solved. Okay. Now, uh, obviously, our listeners are cynical, like we are, so they uh, would probably say, uh, "You've had that Rubik's cube in your hot little. You're twisting it right now and yeah. not looking at it. So you're basically shuffling the cards right now. Is that yeah. correct? Correct. You're not looking at it and you're shuffling. Rob, you're. Uh, I'm you know, watching. Him you're very more carefully. of a sleuth on stuff like this in games than I he am. He is not uh, looking at it, and he right? just actually did a, a flip of it. So I think that thing is is successfully mixed up. 
Yeah. You think it's ready to go? Yeah, but Mac, I do have you... one question because Mac oh teased me God, with this of before. Of course you do. Jeez. <laughs> what? Well, my, we're building go ahead. suspense. No, don't answer me. Just what? What is your question? How oh, much yeah. did you pay for that Rubik's Cube? This Rubik's Cube? Yes. There's a val- there's an, there's a com- no, you do not need to answer that. That is a totally irrelevant question to what's happening right here. But it's a special cube, Mike. It is Why a is very it a special, special cube? It is a speed cube. <laughs> what is a speed cube? Well, so they, my life. What did you do uh, on the show today? We had Mac uh, solve a Rubik's Cube. So the center square. Watch out, are, Joe Rogan. Coming to get you. You might be able to see the center squares are a little bit circular. So oh, they cut Paul the corners Lynn. a little bit. There you go. And now I make a 90, 1970s reference. <laughs> should, have said, should have said Whoopi Goldberg. At least keep it in Charlie his... Weaver in the lower court. Do you look at it? Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Well, I need to look at it to start, but... Yeah, well, no, you need to, what you need look. to do is you need to shuffle it again. I will shuffle it again. Shuffle, don't look <laughs> but, up. Look up. <laughs> I want, I think, this, is, this is unscientific. I mean, once it's shuffled, I can look. Once it's shuffled, if I look at it, it's not going to help. I'm still uh, going to have to do the same thing. Well, it's going to take me about 50 seconds. I want you to seconds. shuffle it. Then I want you to put it down on the ground. I mean, on, on the, the gra- table. On the ground. I want you to put it on M Street. I want you to put it on M Street. Take the elevator. <laughs> That's what I want you to do. No, uh, so you have it on the ground, and then uh, we'll we'll cue you to start. You get to uh, start like when I hit the timer. All right. Okay. All right. And I've got my hot little uh, stopwatch right here, and you just tell me when. Uh, Rob, do you have any uh, last minute instructions, questions, anything like that? The music will start when he makes his first turn. When you finish it. It has Please to go back on the table. Slam it down on the table so I can hear it, it. So if I don't see it quickly, Here, uh, I'll hit the uh, stop button. Okay. Uh, are you Please. ready, Mike McIntosh? I, I am ready. In three, two, one, go. Good video there. He is feverishly looking, turning. We will not have a record today. No, not today. Although it is starting to seconds. come together. 20 seconds. The speed cube mic is coming together. By the way, we're going to give him three shots. Okay. 30 seconds. His record he oh. said was 40. Yeah, if he had had the uh, free fall, he'd be dead right now. Splat. 43 seconds. I wonder if he practiced last night. We're coming up on 60 seconds. Done. 60 oh. seconds. No, 52 <laughs> seconds. Wow, not bad. 52.17. All right, yeah, let's see are... the other three sides. Right. Here we <laughs> go. It. Okay, it is solved. It is now solved. That's, uh, how does that rate with the average Joe out there that thinks he might be good at a Rubik's Cube? If you've done it for a good amount of time and know everything, I would say it's about average. One average. minute is average. Do yeah. you feel... With this type of, type of cube. If do you have you a normal feel, cube. And now start shuffling again because we're going to... Okay. Look at yeah. me and start shuffling again. Yeah. Do you feel like uh, 52.7.17 is uh, a beatable time for you? It depends. <laughs> I, again, yes, yes. It is a very beatable. Okay. I got a bit unlucky where I had to... Undo something and then redo it. Okay. What what was it that you had to undo? Where did so you, what pants. was your fatal flaw? Sometimes you have to move a top piece into a corner, mm-hmm. but if that corner is already in the same place but flipped, you have to pull it out and then put it back right. in. Don't look at the cube. Continue to shuffle, please. Have you I'm, ever uh, disassembled a cube and put it back together? Like f- like removed everything? Yeah. Not this cube, but okay. yes. I've done that because I this couldn't is, solve. Have I you never, really, Mike? I've never been able to solve a Rubik's cube. Here, it eludes over, me. I'll reveal the price of this thing. It's like 40 bucks. 40 bucks. So that's what makes that so special. It's, mm-hmm. well, number one, it's got uh, lube. Lube. <laughs> Wait a minute. What? <laughs> they lubricate it so what? it can spin easier. <laughs> it's got and- lube. Rubik's Cube. Now with lube. <laughs> Jesus. You're and playing with two, fire. With it looks sharp fire. to me. Put it down on the ground again. Sure. Uh, on the uh, table. Sorry, not the ground. Not <laughs> Try not to get lube on the table. <laughs> <laughs> it's got loop. It's got ball it's got bearing in it. Does it have a ball? It, so it's a smoother 
Uh, it's smoother, but it also has magnets on the corner, so it can lo- like lock kind of oh. when it reaches a corner. All right. And Lube you can and lock. put it on your refrigerator. <laughs> Lube and Lock was a uh, failed business that I started back in the uh, mid 1990s. Uh, I don't know it why was, it didn't catch on. Uh, it was you know you could go in and uh, you could buy a, a state of the art padlock and get your oil changed. <laughs> and I guess I was the only one that thought those would uh, go together. I remember, ones. Mike, you insisted that everything must be state-of-the-art. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Mac, you ready for your uh, second of three tries today? Sure. Yeah. See if you can beat your previous time. On your mark, get set, go. Now, he did not look at it while he mixed it up. No, he didn't. He was uh, totally well, everybody at can us. see it. Everybody can see it if they're, if they're watching us on video. Mm-hmm. Our Looks YouTube like channel. A, it's coming together with the orange. 14, 15 seconds. 20 the seconds. focus is extraordinary, is it not? He said his best time is 40 seconds. 40 seconds. Coming and that was, I think, with 30 Lou. seconds. 40 with Lou. 32 seconds. Seems to be uh, He's got one close. corner that's eluding him right now. 40 seconds. He has not uh, beaten his previous best. This is, yeah, this is a very bad... Oh, a very bad mix, mix. It says. Yeah. Oh, dear. There we go. Mm. Oh, stop. Okay. You got to say I'm done. Uh, that's 49.37. You have improved from your 52.17. That's What's that? You're, you seem you seem frustrated right now. Well, no, that's surprising because, it, like, I literally had to do every step. You had I to do every step. Well, I don't know what that means. I, well, of course you have to do every step. It's a Rubik's Cube. There are, like, sometimes if you finish a step, the next step will already be solved. Can we see all sides, please? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> White, blue, <laughs> green, red. Uh, begin to shuffle we, again, because this is going to be your last cube, please. Yes, this hurrah. Is the, this, this is the last one, hurrah. and then we will take the arithmetic mean, Mike, and give yes. the final score so for you've been today. writing these down, we have a 52.1749.37. Yes. Right. No, we're not going to do the average. He's going to go for his best time. Okay. All right. Um, and you said it was 40 seconds? About 40 seconds? Yeah, but that requires a lot of luck. That 40-second that one, I skipped like three different steps. Oh. completely <laughs> you daredevil you <laughs> this ought to be sponsored by red bull um anyway <laughs> well this is extreme this is extreme cubing like extreme sports uh, yeah rob you can see probably a little better than i do if you think it's ready for him to put it, it right, put it on the table put it on the table please all right, all right now, close your uh, eyes this is going to be no. and i'll kiss you Count to three. tomorrow <laughs> i'll miss you <laughs> um uh how are you feeling about that don't look Do, yeah. you peaked don't eyes peak. forward now, no, you know what? Give him the don't talk. All right, you're shuffling it again. Now put it down. All right, let's do. How much time when they set the Guinness record? How much time do they have to look at the Rubik's cube? About five seconds. They have five. Go ahead, take a look at it. Okay, we're going to give you One that chance. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Okay. okay. And on your mark, get set, go. I wonder if that five seconds really helps. I guess it helps with oh, it the, your first move. Yeah, it you helps know? with the first move, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Focus, focus, man. Don't, focus. don't distract him. Distract him. Distract him. Oh, I, I, I wonder how many skips, how many steps he'll skip. My studio this studio smells like snake crap today. <laughs> get to that in a minute. <laughs> is it He's, time for a... It's time for what the, do they call it, a grunge? Uh, 30 seconds. Oh, Mac, come on, man. I see him. It appears he's undoing things. That slows him 40 down. 40 seconds. Oh, Mac. Done. 51.39. Yeah, okay. that was, I, I fumbled that completely. I did get a skip, but I completely fumbled. That's, uh, but, but that is three. I will give him uh, applause that that is three under 60 seconds. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, very, very good. What do you now, have to say for yourself after that demonstration? Are you disappointed? A little bit. What did you what 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 you obviously well, thought I was hoping, about? I was this hoping to, well, I was hoping to get lucky. All right. I, was, I, well, I didn't get been, much luck, so that's been like since your <laughs> early twenties. You know. Another day. Yeah, another another day. dollar. Um, yeah. Let me ask you this. Did you uh getting ready to come in and do it, you knew you were gonna do it on the show today. Did you have yeah. in your mind uh a number that might be really cool that you thought you might get? If I could get 45 again, because it's been 
to be fair, I don't tie myself. Okay. I have not tied myself in a very long time. All right. Um, but it was something like when I got past 45 one time, that was cool. And that was in high school. Did you practice that. last night? What? Did you practice bit, yeah. it all last night to get ready for the challenge? Or is it sort of sort of innate? I mean, once you've got it, you've yeah, got it. Yeah, once, essentially, yeah. Does okay. math uh, play a part in this at all? I don't know, fellas. You both are more math oriented. In the terms of, not, not really, but it's what's called algorithms is Algorithm. what it is. Okay, thank mm. you. You may be excused. I've, I'm done with this. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's uh, Mike McIntosh, ladies and gentlemen. Another marvelous skill that he shares with us, Mike. I, uh, I, that, interesting. When I, when I said... Um, for those of you a little peek behind the curtain here, thank you, Mac. Thank you, Mac. Very, very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Happy, happy holidays, everybody. This is, um, this is what I we have do. To, uh, to. I was moved. This studio was moved into a garage down here in West South Florida. Um, what six months ago? Something like yeah, that. About that. Five, March. Six months March. Ago. March. Uh, and so now. Uh, this is my little room in here. I have mm-hmm. tools. I have a little watch station where I repair watches, inexpensive watches that I right, not totally inexpensive, but no. uh, but bargain watches. I don't have the uh, they're your hobby, you know, the yeah. elite ones. I have one really good one that I uh, that I treasure, and I've already polished that. So you're not supposed to in the watch world. But anyway, you, you can. Also, is there such a thing as over polishing a watch? Yes. A hundred percent. As a matter of fact, uh, vintage watches are uh, known to uh, retain more value if they are not polished. Really? Because I yeah, guess you in can. Some, in I, some cases, not all cases. In many, 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 many cases, you can refurbish a watch and sell it for more than you paid for it. But uh, in the world of vintage watches, uh, like real pieces that are special, uh, the untouched watch with the worn bezel and all that stuff can be uh can be valuable here's a here's a word that we've revisited in the past the patina the patina should be undisturbed on a discoloration of the dial or the hands on a watch and that is also uh if you have a vintage watch you don't necessarily want to replace the dial if it's got a good looking patina on it which is a Mm -hmm. fading that's a nice fancy way of saying fading so i've got that in the garage and uh other than that i have this studio and one last little wrinkle when we moved in here, Carla insisted that my and I'll call it my snake, my snake Jake, who I brought, who I purchased uh, two years ago. I think it was yeah, two years that's ago. That's about right for my son who wanted a snake and At uh, his request. Know, the, yeah, the, the the little boy who uh, I aim to please, uh, and he pleases me. So he does his part, and I'm delighted with him. But let's make no mistake: pets for parents when you get a pet. Usually the adult ends up taking care of it. Ninety five percent of the time. I exclusively take care of this snake. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, when you feed a snake, as I did uh two days ago, uh you have to um you know, deal with the after effects of that. Where well, and input I believe, equals output, yeah. Yeah. I believe that uh you know, it's chilly down here too, so it's a little chillier in the garage than normal, but I've got a heating pad underneath the uh terrarium. Or the enclosure that I yeah. keep him in, and I also have a hot lamp above, so there there, there is no problem with that snake staying. Uh, warm. He likes it. He likes it warm, right? That's his. They're sort cold of a- blooded creatures, so they rely on the uh, mm-hmm. the sun, I believe, uh, to you know keep them warm. I know That's he's it. growing, and the last time I saw him was uh, yeah seven or eight months ago. Mm-hmm. Is he up to a bigger mouse or a small rat now? When you he feed is him? up to a small rat, I now uh, exclusively feed him. Uh, frozen rats and the frozen rat have i shown the frozen rat you have not <laughs> with baby marshmallows <laughs> I, you know at this point my mind is uh racing a little bit because i'm wondering will this really uh disturb a large segment of uh of the listening well audience? not a lot of people love rats but right. still it is a little graphic I'll be so right i think mike uh, is going to get one, the frozen rat now it'll yes. take one second it'll take a moment right now be Mac, right how do you how do you feel about Rubik's rodents, cube. Mac? Uh, how do I feel about what rodents? Sorry, rodents, rodents. I don't like them. I, I, but I'm not like deathly afraid. Yeah, of them. we've had mice. We've dealt with mice, especially when I lived uh, in in an older house. Mice were a very common thing in the fall. They'd come yeah. in. Mice don't bother me. Rats are pretty bad. 
Rats are no flying good. Flying squirrels was pretty bad. Well, that, that. most people don't deal with flying squirrels. I did. You did when? This uh, I told this on the show. Uh, it was on like a. It was on New Year's Eve around like four or five years ago. Uh huh. And remember, it, it was crawling up the TV and the Christmas tree. That's right. And flying yeah. across the room. Yep. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, but that it's less was common. Not fun. It's less common. Than, yes. Uh, which <laughs> I've never seen a flying squirrel yet have one in my house. Yes. Yeah. That's. Uh, do you know how it got in? We think through the chimney, oh, I see. or like through the Mike. That stack. looks like from a distance, like a like a like a bag of granola. It's a rat bag. <laughs> it's a rat bag. Of course. <laughs> so, do the frozen rats come like prepackaged? In the rat bag. Yeah. How many in a bag? Three. Three rats in a bag. <laughs> so Mike has the bag, and he doesn't look like he relishes looking into the. bag. Oh, look at that! There's a little guy in there. He's white. I'm not going to touch it. So. Well, you should. I mean, it's it's his final resting place. Okay. I'll be dog. There is a rat in that bag. <laughs> Hi, buddy. You know what? He looks like he's smiling. I think he was happy when he passed. There he yep, is. there he is. Sorry. I didn't realize that the frozen rats would come with packaging, and I didn't realize they would come in a multi-pack. But I guess that's for the bargain hunter. <laughs> Mike, you look really distressed. Sorry. It's the circle of life. There's nothing before. wrong with that. That's it. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Uh, Mac, is my shot screwed up now? Or what? Is that all right? Uh, yeah. It's, uh, you you want to move it over a little bit. Center move yourself. Move it on over this way? Yeah. Yeah. How much do you pay for a three-pack of rats? Frozen. Oh, boy. I think, like, a lot. It's not cheap. Is know? it cheaper if you were to buy them fresh? Uh, I don't know. I, I really don't. No, it would be more expensive if I bought them. Because I remember when we fed him. We, Say goodbye um, to the rats. It's gross. gross. Yeah. <laughs> this grossed me out. I can only imagine how uh, wonderful it must have been for our listeners. I didn't find it so bad, but then I'm not right there. I think it's bad when you're right there. We, uh, When we fed the, the snake when we were down there in March, Mac, we actually went to the pet place and got a live mouse in a box that we had to drive back to the house. And I was, a, I was charged with holding the box. And it was, oh yeah, that was weird because you could hear him moving around and you knew his, his days were numbered. I would think that it's less emotional to feed a frozen rat than a live mouse because once we let the mouse yeah. out of the box, there was a few moments when he thought everything was great. I'm out of the box. I'm in By a the terrarium. way, a lens cleaner can also be used as a hand sanitizer. Oh, high, well, high in alcohol content. The uh, you know, proprietary uh, substance in there is isopropyl alcohol. So Sure. There you go. And you so, never touch the rat. I never touched Mike, the rat. Can you, but... move, can you move your cam a little bit more? Yeah, okay. God damn it, Mac. All right. What, <laughs> how's this? Is it, oh, I see. I know what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, this way. Does, the, yeah. does he react Tell me different? when it's perfect. One more. One more. One more. One, one more that way? Yeah, perfect. Okay. God, now does, i got to tighten the shot a little bit. Thank you. How does Jake right. react no, to, the, uh, right. to a frozen being as opposed to a fresh being? Because I remember he looked like he really enjoyed the little bit of fight when he had a live mouse in his cage. So now you're just uh, dropping in a frozen rat. He How didn't he... enjoy that. He almost got hurt. And they can get uh, hurt by that. Oh, really? Mac, just tell me what I've got. You're good. <laughs> Is that good, Rob? Yes, that yes okay? that's, that's good. good. Uh, I also well, screwed up my clock, Rob, so you've got to give me the wrong okay. time. Okay, well, we where should we break any. We're show. almost at 40, so we should break oh, any my God. time. All right. All right. So, sorry about that. All right. We, all right. Will take a, uh, we will take a break, and when we come back, we've got the round table and uh, lots of good stuff coming up later on in the show. Uh, I want to talk about Frankie kind of seriously uh, oh, no. because the time, unfortunately, is coming, and it sucks. I didn't think it would suck this much, so... Maybe I'm seeking advice. We'll be right back. Oh, dear sweet naked wines, how I love thee. I love thee with turkey or chicken or beef. Even by yourself, you pair better than an iPhone 15 Pro. <laughs> you see, Naked Wines is a subscription service that connects you to the finest independent winemakers on the planet, so you get wine as often as you like for a fraction of the price you pay in stores. Up to 60% off. The delivery is wonderful. I love the packaging. Amazing, secure. And the best part, every bottle is a passion project from an independent winemaker. And as someone who, you know, sorry to say this, but I maybe uh, indulged too much, but I really didn't. There are a lot of people in the house, and we all drank the Naked Wines wines. 
over the holiday weekend. Everybody they were all enjoyed fantastic. Them. Yes, they yes. were really, really over the top good. So you're literally, when you get Naked Wines, you're making an independent winemaker's dream come true, and that is a good thing. Naked Wines makes everything taste better, I promise. So head to nakedwines.com slash TMOS, click Enter Voucher in the top right when you get to the website, then all you do is enter TMOS for both the code and the password. So that's TMOS two times. That'll get you six bottles of wine for just $39.99 like I did with shipping included. $100 off and less than $7 per bottle. And I should say $7 per delicious bottle. There were a wide variety of bottles that we enjoyed and they were all good. Every single one of them. And, you know, that's special. I love that, especially when you're getting a mixture of uh, different wineries that are involved in this. Nakedwines.com slash TMOS. Use the code and password TMOS to grab six bottles for just $39.99. Nakedwines.com slash TMOS. uh, TMOS. Code and password TMOS for $100 off your first six bottles, everybody. Oh, look at the bracket. He's Um, frozen. Yeah. By the way, you'll have to keep me uh, straight on uh, what's going yeah, we'll on today because I uh, yeah, screwed up with uh, the rats and everything else that we it have was here. Fine. We start today with Disney. They haven't released a movie this year that's uh, cracked one billion dollars. Now you might not think that's a big deal, but uh, apparently for the movie industry, especially Disney, uh, that's not good. It's the first time that uh, this has happened since 2014. So I guess every year since 2014, they've cracked a billion bucks with a movie? I think that makes sense, especially if you take the international markets into it, because they're very big overseas. And you don't count the uh, pandemic years of uh, 2020 and 2021. Major releases like the Marvels, Indiana Jones, and the Dial of Destiny, which everybody thought sucked, and the live-action remake of The Little Mermaid all failed to meet expectations. Even Guardians of the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 uh, was it really called Guardians of the Guardians of the Galaxy, Mac? Was that what it was called? Really? Yeah, it was. Okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> He's exhausted after well, the Mike, Rubik's Cube. If he has to answer that question quickly, he needs it to be lucky. Uh, that one, which was supposed to be a real block, but only, only see, I, I hear these numbers and I yeah. think it's stunning, only made... Eight hundred forty-five point six million, but apparently they're expensive to make. You know, it's so. funny when you mention those those films. There was a little bit of buzz, but the only one that I really remember causing like a blip in the social awareness was the Indiana Jones movie, mm-hmm. and that was horrible. I saw it in the theater, and it was not it was not a great film. I think those are just bad choices this year. They're mining, and they're mining a, a mine that's empty if they're going this, back to all these Here's sequels. why I think this might be um, a good thing, because I've said it all along. The original idea in Hollywood mm-hmm. has been, uh, you know, dust for a long time. And I think when you're talking about mining the superhero universe for gold again and again and again, yes. I think there's burnout. And I think people have burned out on the superheroes. And I think that we, uh, you know, if we get more creative storytelling even in the action adventure genre i think you can expand that and you can make it doesn't all have to be comic books i think comic books have been just a cheap way to get away with these movies for a long time and if their numbers aren't delivering that's probably the reason you're seeing that people are burned out on them i think yeah you don't need you don't need a template for an action adventure to be successful and also i think that a lot of the best content is going directly to television now what was the movie on netflix that we watched watched a few weeks ago about the assassin uh the killer the killer that was a great movie but it was also not you know and those type of movies have been made before but the genre of overdone cgi which they pay so much money for to get it Mm -hmm. done to see a painted movie I'm I'm surprised it hasn't happened sooner. I always got tired of it. I didn't like it. I didn't care for that particular genre, but we'll have to wait and see. An mm. industry analyst says, quote, Disney set an impossibly high bar for itself during the 2010s, uh, firing every cannon in its arsenal. The downside to success is that it becomes expected every time. The studio was always to be uh, going to be in a challenged position when the well started to run dry. You know, original ideas. I think that's, yeah, that's what, what it's we need. Uh, all about. And more, uh, you know, more films from the good independent producers. That's Please. what I like. Please. Uh, when people say the 70s and 80s were a different time, uh, this is the kind of thing that they were talking about. I found this out today, and this was a funny little story. 
uh, back in the day, for those youngsters that are listening or people that are a little younger than I am, there was a uh, a show that's still been popular, and it's hugely popular now with Steve Harvey, Family Feud. Of the course. The original host of that show on television was a guy by the name of Richard Dawson. He was a British actor who had uh, been on a smash hit TV series called Hogan's Heroes, and he resurrected his career by being a game show host, and he was just super slicky boy, Tanned L.A. Yeah, gold he was, chains, that kind he, uh, of dude. He right? was huge. He used to be bottom middle on Match Game, and that's where right. he became known to game show audiences. And when Goodson and Todman made Family Feud, which is one of the greatest constructions yeah. of a game show ever, it's almost Truly is. perfect. Truly, that's and, why it lasts today. They all yeah. all the good ones hang on. That's yeah. The way it so goes. they brought him over from Match Game to a host, which was a good uh, step. You for may him. not know this, Rob. Contestants. Used to be now the big thing about Richard Dawson, he would kiss contestants. Everybody, yeah, full on the lips. And contestants used to be this is a true story. Used to be tested for herpes <laughs> before going on the show. <laughs> this is from 1976 when Dawson hosted till 1985. Uh, he would kiss all the female contestants directly on the lips. Yep. And because of that, both male and female contestants were ordered to, quote, undergo a mouth test for the herp. And that know, is a true it might story. Have been more useful to test them after they were on. <laughs> yeah. No word on whether he had to sign a certificate exactly. or anything like that. Uh, the policy began because people actually complained about all the promiscuous kissing on the show. See, people were tight assed and prudy back in those Always, days, too. Yeah. Uh, and the many diseases that could result. Uh, this is from a book called Outrageous, A History of Showbiz and the Culture Wars, a wow. gift that I think I should I get Rob Spiewak. Uh, no written idea by this happened. Yeah. This name, Cliff Nesterhoff. Cliff oh, yeah, I know Cliff Nesterhoff. K-L-I-P-H. Cliff wrote yeah, an amazing book about comedians. He's a really great television historian. I would. You haven't read this read one though, right? No, I have not. No. Okay, I'll send it to you on DVD. Surveyed, Mike, one hundred people surveyed top five answers on the board. Here is the question: What is that on your lip? Cliff, <laughs> it's my Cliff Nesterov. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, that was a cool little uh, piece I love of trivia. The first commercial airliner to cross the Atlantic on a purely high-fat, low-emissions fuel flew Tuesday from London to New York in a step toward achieving what supporters called Jet Zero. The Virgin Atlantic Boeing 787, that's a big plane, uh, was huge. powered without using fossil fuels, relying on so-called sustainable aviation fuel made up largely, uh, largely of tallow and other waste fats. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably in the – if you're in back of that jet, yeah. whoa. Yeah, look know. out, look out. Do not go in there. <laughs> uh, the world will always uh, assume – this is from uh, Richard Branson. He says, quote, the world will always assume something can't be done until you do it, said uh, Virgin founder Richard Branson, always, yes. always forward on these type of things. Uh, he was aboard the flight with others, including corporate and government officials, engineers, and – Journalists. My question is, if you are burning the tallow, the fat, what's the uh, footprint? Do you still, I mean, I would assume you're burning it, so it does cause some kind of Well, I mean, pollution. like, when you... But you, you're not digging up the oil. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but I mean, like, if you look at, like, a, an oil lamp, right? Mm -hmm. And I know that's a petroleum-based lamp, but it's the, the same theory. The kind that you burns, light your house with now. Yeah, the, yeah, by the DVDs. I say I right. need, to light mm -hmm. a, need to light a lamp to search. The output is just smoke. It's nothing solid. And, it I mean, they can burn that inside your house. So I imagine it is a smaller residue left out. And but tallow, then, you know what tallow is. Tallow what, like um, beef fat. bone marrow or something no, like that? No, it's mostly or? beef fat, I think. Beef fat. All right, yeah. so that's it. Good for Richard Branson. And, uh, and we'll, it's we'll, delicious. Maybe we'll hear. It's absolutely <laughs> fantastic, yeah. And it just uh, turns into a nice broth. You can drink. <laughs> On uh, Tuesday... Rescue yes. workers managed to bring India a dose of good news. Uh, I followed this a little bit. We don't have it over here where it's Hamas, Hamas, Hamas all the right. time. But right. they saved 41 men who had been trapped under a collapsed tunnel in India's Himalayan, uh, I can't pronounce the location, Uttarakhand. I think that's what it is. That Uttarakhand. Right. Yeah. U-T-T-A-R-K. 
A-K-H-A-N-D, the Himalayan Uttarakhand state, since uh, they've been there since November 12th. Uh, after many, wow. many attempts, it wasn't just high-tech tools that got the men out. A team of so-called rat miners practicing a craft that's officially illegal proved uh, successful. Here's how the workers were rescued. Rat mining or rat hole mining okay. is the process of digging a narrow tunnel, uh, but, but obviously room enough where people can get in there, and excavating by manually digging through that tunnel. The uh, techniques gets its name from uh, you know the rat holes that you see sure. burrowing, burrowing into the ground. Uh, they were typically just big enough for the workers to descend and extract uh, thin seams of coal. I can't think of anything more horrible God. and dangerous than that. Yeah. That's what they did. Uh, and, oh, and of course, it's India. For this reason, children were usually tasked with the job of going in the rat hole and getting... But the uh, the lack of ventilation and safety measures brought the controversy uh, to an end. The method was banned by an environmental court in 2014 and... Rat hole digging got these uh, miners out. They were successful in getting That's down there. That's crazy, yeah. Uh, and it's a big, intricate way that they combined with technology to get them out. But the rat hole uh, mine got 41 miners out. So that's, that's a big great. story. Mac, you know? if we ever get trapped in a mine, I would, I'll need you to rat hole for me. <laughs> rat hole. Absolutely. Fair enough. Thank yes. you very much. I'll grab, I'll grab, I'll grab uh, a bunch Beyonce's of Beyonce's <laughs> mom uh, has criticized sad little haters who suggested the star lightened her skin for the premiere of her Renaissance film. The singer went for a platinum blonde hair look and wore a silver dress at the red carpet event on Saturday. Some criticized Beyonce on social media for changing her appearance and said she looked so white. In a long Instagram post, Tina Knowles defended her daughter and said the comments were racist, yeah. did which they I ask, agree with. Did they ask her sister? Uh, what's her name, Rob? Solange. Not to be confused with her more successful sister who is... Uh, they Thank you. Appreciate that. And uh, finally, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the host of a weekend family lunch at her Australian country home was charged Thursday with murdering her ex-husband's parents and aunt with poisonous mushrooms and attempting to murder a fourth guest. Police arrested Erin Peterson, uh, <laughs> where her former husband's parents... Uh, Gail and Don Patterson, both Gail Patterson's sister, Heather Wilkinson, and Wilkinson's husband, Ian Wilkinson, were invited for lunch on July 29th. All the folks were in their 60s and 70s, and all four guests were hospitalized the next day. Only one of them survived. Wow. Uh, Patterson has publicly denied uh, the wrongdoing. So, yeah. uh, you know. You think you have problems with your in-laws? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not much funny you can say about that, but uh, that's all there is to it. Uh, we'll take a break. More when soon. we come back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've got uh, a few things that I'd like to ask Rob Spiewak, even though he hasn't watched as much as I have, about the new episodes of The Crown. Crown, yes. And just where they are getting their content. And it uh, might be a little spoiler alert. We'll have that when we come back. This podcast is sponsored by Groove Life. You know what time it is? It's time to update your wallet. The Groove Wallet is a sleek, low-profile aluminum wallet engineered for everyday use. One thumb motion, perfect, perfectly. I was going to say perfectly. Hey, well, that My works God. too. Yeah. Uh, no, it doesn't. One thumb motion perfectly fans out up to six cards for easy access, and it comes with Groove Life's 94 year no BS warranty. Plus, they just launched a new attachment, the Groove Wallet Go. It attaches to your iPhone 12, 13, or 14 by using innovative micro suction technology. It gives you the ability to add another three cards plus cash. This wallet is so slim, you can easily fit it in your front pocket. Really good if you're uh, going to malls where they're pickpockets. Yes, pickpockets. You barely know it's there. And don't forget, Groove Life makes the best belts in the world. All the Groove Life wallets and belts make a great gift. Just saying. It's time to bring your wallet into the 21st century. Head to GrooveLife.com slash TMOS for 20% off all Groove Life products. That's the best offer you're going to find. You have to use our link. GrooveLife.com slash TMOS for 20% off your order one last time. That's promo code TMOS for 20% off your order. Just click the button on our website. 
All right. Uh, if you haven't and are planning on watching the latest episode of The Crown, which centers around the death of Princess Diana, uh, you might want to turn things down right now because I want to ask Rob some questions about All right. this. Uh, Go ahead. So uh, I don't know how deep you've gotten into uh, this latest uh, season of The Crown, but I'm up to the part where it's focusing on her death. Okay. And what happened after her death? Now, at we the beginning all know, of this season, is, is she alive or has the death already happened? It's a flashy backy kind of okay, uh, situation. So, okay, so you have not right. watched this season at not all. Not this season, no. All mm-hmm. right. So the I know. Look, the books that have been written about the uh, royal family uh, are multifold, yes. and certainly about the death of Princess Diana are multifold. What I always knew about this uh, worldwide tragedy where the world uh, mourned for uh, this woman because she had such incredible uh, I remember power it. and charisma. Mm-hmm. And she, uh, you know, she really was so The first to stand up England. against the, the British monarchy, too. I mean, she went out on her own terms. No, yeah. that's not necessarily true because you can go back to, uh, you know, King George. Uh, mm. Or whatever the king, what King Edward? I'm not sure. One of the yeah. kings that was, uh, you know, uh, the brother of Elizabeth's yeah, father. Yeah, he said bye bye. Yeah, and he left because so they've always had their little rocky moments, and then you know people's heads got cut off. So you really got to be accurate if okay. you're, you know. I, All right. My father would be rolling his eyes that I'm kind of an anglophile <laughs> when it comes to this stuff. But the storyline goes that f- two things came into play that I wasn't aware of. The relationship she had with Dodi Fayed, right. uh, who was the billionaire playboy, uh, and Diana was taken. They were pictures taken on his boat, and blah blah blah. And it goes back and forth. The story goes like this: that Mohammed Fayed, Dodi's father, was really, really putting pressure on his son to court uh, Diana because he wanted legitimacy within uh, the British Empire. Okay, he wanted to sense. be seen as a player. But uh, now I've read about that. I've also, you know, read about the paparazzi and, you know, the fact that her driver had alcohol in his system mm-hmm. when that happened and that they were chased all over Paris with uh, the paparazzi and the paparazzi were horrible, which uh, is well demonstrated in this. What I didn't know, and what they seem to take an awful lot of artistic liberty from, is that he, Dodi Fayed, their courtship was well along, and two things were happening, that he had actually proposed to her, and that she had rebuffed the proposal and was planning on breaking the whole thing off. Now, I have Mm. no idea uh, whether that's true and how much artistic license they have, but I can tell you, before you comment on it, I can tell you one thing, that oddly enough, it's just so strange the way human beings affect other human beings. Watching the outpouring and the dramatic recreation of the outpouring of love and affection for this woman, it actually got me a little verklempt, too, because I remembered how stunning it was and yeah. how powerful it, it was and it made me feel bad all over again for those two boys that yeah. uh because of this relentless pursuit of their mother and you know technically the jilted mother that prince charles left for you know another woman right it just was uh it was very very sad but it's uh, the crown does an amazing job that's what yeah, i, really I uh, to say. you know that was an amazing thing i remember it's one of the deaths that i remember like right where i was when i heard about it it was that stunning mm-hmm. but yeah. the thing about the crown you have to sort of do at least a 25 percent suspension of disbelief because they can get all the facts exactly right But how they stitch it together with dialogue and attitudes, there's no way to confirm that. Yeah, you have to think about it. So yeah, Uh, it's it's an interesting story the way they weaved it. Very favorable to uh, Diana. Yeah, and you know, and not really over. It makes Dodi Fayed. uh, I'm sorry, Mohammed Fayed, his father, out to be a bit of a monster uh, with this. And didn't Dodi uh, do? uh, Dodi do. Didn't Dodie do an interview, like an in-depth one, like a couple of years ago, where he kind of came off as sleazy too, right? Dodie or Muhammad? Dodie. Dodie, Dodie was dead. Dodie was killed in the car wreck. 
Oh, then maybe it was. Who that was would be the really with? tough for him to do an interview two yeah, years ago. Yeah, good get, though. An absolutely good get. <laughs> be very uh, difficult. You know, I'm trying to think. A, there was an interview, though, with someone. Who, well, no, um, I'm, I'm just confused. There was a right. close up person that was interviewed that didn't paint Doty in the best way. So, if, you know, if Doty was that manipulated by his dad, that makes him just as what just as they bad. make him. Uh, obsessed with the affection of his father that's kind of why ah. uh, but but he also is enamored of uh diana and uh you know broke off his other engagement for her shortly before the uh, car accident but uh you do get a little peek behind the scenes uh dramatically altered obviously of you know the stiff upper lip of the royal family and how yes. that kind of bit them uh, and I think we all do remember that, that it took Queen Elizabeth a long time to come forward. But if you if you want some good viewing and you're even yeah. slightly interested in the subject matter, I think they do a great job. And the young lady that plays uh, Diana, don't know the actress's name, but she is absolutely brilliant and does an outstanding job. She's of, also uh, featured in that, uh, that series Murder at the End of the World. She's oh, really? the lead in that, yeah, and she's oh, very good. Yeah. Well, that's no, that's more reason to watch that. So mm-hmm. check it out. Let me know what you think. And uh, I know there are people out there that have read everything on the royal family, so they can yeah. enlighten me. Uh, and we'll find out more, perhaps. Uh, when we come back, ladies and gentlemen, actors with the most movies right here on the Mike O'Mara Show. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I am so, so proud of my wife, Carla, and the fact that at DermBlowSkin.com right now, she is helping people lose weight. Uh, There's the new component of her business that uh, you can go to DermBlowSkin.com, click on the weight loss button, and you will be able to get yourself uh, at least a quiz to find out if you qualify for the weight loss meds that I have been on. And I am telling you, uh, I call it my willpower helper, and... Many people that Carla has helped have had a a tough slog getting these meds from other sources. So now you can go online. You can go to dermglowskin.com. They will put you in touch with the quiz master that will let you know if you qualify for these meds and also a doctor who will prescribe the medication for you if you qualify. Uh, We're excited to share with you that uh, it's your one-stop shop for finally getting control of your weight problem. Look, it worked for me. And I'm living proof that it is uh, something that has helped me enormously. Uh, I'll tell you, there's nothing quite like it. All you have to do is click the weight loss button at dermglowskin.com. You take a quiz, you see if you qualify, and then a doctor will write you a prescription. The pharmacy will fill it, and your weight loss medication will be shipped directly to your house. They work you uh, through every step where you how to take the medication, how to do it, what uh, what exactly is entailed mm-hmm. in it. These are the real weight loss products. They're called semi-glutide and terzipatide, and you've heard so much about them. They've been written about constantly. And if you qualify, you can get them right now at dermglowskin.com. I don't really think there's an easier way that you can get in touch with a doctor and you can see if you qualify. Yeah. They're doing it. It is completely legit. If you're Liaison. already on it, you can yeah. do what I did. You can show the doctor your prescription and you can easily make the switch. I already did. I'm still losing weight to date over 65 pounds. Go ahead, get excited and do it all online right now at dermglowskin.com. If you struggle with weight for too long, click the weight loss button and begin the best journey of your life. Be like our proud partner, Sam Waterston. (laughs) Sam has won an Emmy, a Golden Globe, a SAG Award and a BAFTA. That's British, you know. Uh, yes. But his proudest moment was when he lost enough weight to play <laughs> old Abe Lincoln. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Thanks to Derm Glow. You can visit him at his Gettysburg address. You can visit him at his Gettysburg address. Sam Waterston, Mike. He's a wonderful actor. Sam Waterston. Uh, so proud to yeah. have him on board. <laughs> really, uh, the other day, Carla was... Um, Dealing with a new client that she had at Derm Glow, and uh, this person had uh, was still trying to get the weight loss meds and had been trying for a couple of months and was unsuccessful. Uh, Carla was able to hook her up with uh, the company that provides these meds, and so she great. was qualified, and a doctor wrote the prescription for her. She's now going to get the weight loss help she needs. There are a lot of our listeners out there that are listening to this, right? If you're not motivated, uh, let this motivate you to do it. It's, uh, it's something that has worked for me, Make and I love step. the yeah. feeling of not 
you know, being out of control when it comes to food. So uh, check it out at dermglowskin.com. It's just a button right there. It says weight loss. Rob Spiewak, you came in today talking about actors yes. with the most movies. And when you said that, and the reason I wanted to get to it on the show today yes. is because when you mention that, I think people that have been in tons of movies aren't necessarily the greatest actors and it's not superstars exclusively am i right, right about you that are. right, right you are right you are mike okay. i say hooray hooray for hollywood movieweb.com put together they scoured i guess all of imdb and found the 25 actors who have been in the most movies and the answers may surprise you okay i'll go i'll move down i'll start with the number one because this is not going to be anticlimactic that what way. if you were to give a percentage on this list of the a-listers on this list, what would be the percentage of A-listers? Uh, 10 to okay. 15 percent, I, I think. Okay, yeah. lay it on me. Uh, Mike, number one is not a great performer, but I would say is related to a great performer. I okay, believe can that, I guess? Uh, can yeah, I guess? Please. Yeah. Clint Howard. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the uh, <laughs> I would say a... Julia Roberts would be an A-star, right? One of so the top this is stars her all... brother, Eric? Eric Roberts has been in 455 movies. <laughs> All crap. Yeah, every one of them a disaster. Hey, That's Mac, right. let me ask you a question. Uh, no, I, I'll ask a question later. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, Rob. Uh, okay. Number two is a silent film actress, Gertrude Astor. Number three, great John Carradine, father of several Hollywood stars like David Carradine. He played in a lot of Universal movies in the Gertrude 30s. Gertrude Astor? Gertrude Astor made 276 movies, but a lot of them were silent. Okay, so it's sort so of, a, it's sort of thought, a wash. I thought that At was At number an old four, thing. with 219, I would say this is a pretty big star. Danny Glover made 219 movies. It's amazing when you think That's about it. That's a that. lot if you think about it, right? And these are, you know, features. Actual Hollywood movies, yeah. Feature films that mm -hmm. require, you know, a good chunk of, uh, you know, half a year to do in most yeah. cases. Right. Um, another Danny at number five with 215, Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo, who is uh, the pockmarked uh, Typical guy villain. that's like yeah. the biker e mm -hmm. evil guy. Yeah, all right, great. Uh, okay. I can't believe he's been. You know what? But I bet it's been little tiny roles. Sure, extra that, work. Right? Yeah, and, probably. Not necessarily extra as much as like a, you know, a bit part. There he is. There's Dan Hey, way to go, Mac. Yeah, You're being nice. fleet of foot today. That's Mike, at number right six, there. horror great, and also in uh, Star Wars, Christopher Lee has made 211 movies. That doesn't surprise me that much. Yeah, because mo a lot of them were also the Dracula franchise. Yeah, and they, where, yeah, uh, they churned them out. They churned them out. And they were out. just all over the place Hammer in different films. horror movies. Horror movie guys can make a lot of movies. At number eight, Mike, noted anti-Semite Hollywood star Ward Bond with 200 movies. Now, who and is Ward Bond? Ward Bond plays Bert the Cop in It's a Wonderful Life. You will also see him in <laughs> so Maltese Falcon. So you're going Falcon. way back. And he's also, well, you see, the thing about how Ward do you Bond. Know, how do you identify him as noted anti-Semite? Read about it. He did not oh, really? like, he was Only a Rob hateful Spielberg bastard. With the, really? Yeah. He looks kind of like a prick. Yeah, you know? he's a dick, Ward Bond. Wow, how about Mike, that? Mike, we have a tie at number 10 with 190 movies, Jackie Chan and Mickey Rooney. Now Mickey that, Rooney, yeah, was that, that's back when they really worked him to death with that yep, studio system, yep. right? But Jackie Chan, that's amazing too. That's 190 movies. That's a but lot. But does that? But it, you know, 190 movies not necessarily uh, made in the United States, right? Jackie no, Chan no. made a lot yeah, of movies Hong in Kong. China before that. Yeah. Movies his, we would not have seen. Do you know what his big American break was? What's that? The Cannonball Run. Really? Yeah, he was in the Jackie Cannonball Chan Run. Is that old? Yeah, he is. He's old. I fella. Didn't know that. I, uh, I would it. say at number 12, we have an A-lister. Samuel L. Jackson has made 174 movies. He is a definite A-lister, and he is a working actor. You know, it's, it's really odd when you hear these numbers and you realize how many, especially when you're dealing with the sag after strike that just got yes. resolved, mm -hmm. and you're realizing you know, just what these guys do when they are actors, if they get five, if they get three, if they get one opportunity, it's a big deal. Right. But Samuel Jackson deserves it, in my opinion. Good actor. 168 movies made by A-lister Susan Sarandon. Susan Sarandon, another one. Uh, yeah. It's just I never thought of her as that prolific. But I think when you're that prolific, you also have, uh, you know, what uh, you know what Darren McGavin would call a clanker oh, down God. the line. Yeah, yeah. Not all um, really good stuff. 
Number 15, Mike, we've seen his ass, Donald Sutherland with 156 movies. Donald Sutherland, and here's a little factoid for you about that. If you're an Animal House fan, uh, what really got that movie made was the participation of A-lister Donald Sutherland, who jumped on board, that. and uh, that's why that because that movie didn't have any any known stars. You're right, yeah, at, at the particular time, other than John Belushi, who was a brand new star on mm-hmm. the uh, on the scene. Come on, guys, this is my mm-hmm. job. That's what he says. <laughs> uh, Ernest Borgnine has made 148 movies, mostly as the romantic lead. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Oh, he was the you know, Poseidon Adventure, Mikhail of Mikhail's Navy. Yeah. So not only has he made that many feature films, but he had a major, long-running TV sitcom. Show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Um, um, Mike, this is the one name I would have guessed at the outset. At number 17 with 147 movies, the man who can't say no, Michael Caine. Michael Caine and some iconic roles and some, you know, Comedy roles yeah. and some real horrible movies that he's he was made. like in Jaws ten. He was in one of the later sequels of Jaws that he did. He and was he, an honest- Alfie, my dear. Yes, he, he was an God, Alfie. That's a long yes. time ago. Rupert, you know- do you want me to get the genital cuff? You, you know, go. what's a great movie of his that you don't hear about much is Death Trap. He's Death great Trap. In That's Death your type Trap. of. That is so your type of yeah, movie. It is. It's a dark. That's a, it's a murder dark on the comedy. Orient Express. Yeah, Why do you I love like it. those kind of movies so much? I, I don't love understand them. I don't you. At number eighteen, Mike, I think you're a fan. He made 145 motion pictures. Anthony Quinn. Anthony Quinn, uh, my favorite, uh, probably one of the last ones he did, which was Revenge with Kevin Costner, which I don't think got uh, really well reviewed. Where he plays like this uh, Mexican crime syndicate boss that mm-hmm. uh, Kevin Costner has an affair with his wife who is played by oh damn it I'm trying to remember well I can't it's a, it escapes me now but maybe uh, it was the movie. actress at uh, number 22 Mike probably not Betty Davis <laughs> Betty Davis she made a lot of movies yeah yeah because she had that uh, resurgence in her career when she was the old lady and played yeah. horror movies mm-hmm. she was tied with Anthony Hopkins in our bottom two Robert Duvall has made 93 movies and Clint Eastwood 82 films, and that's a lot. So not as many A-listers as you would think with that, but that's right. pretty cool. Working right, actors, so, uh, yeah. Get out there and uh, and see that. I was expecting uh, a few more, you know, nasty actors on there, but there really aren't. They're all pretty talented people. But Except Eric people Roberts, that are Mike. Eric yeah. Roberts. Oh, there he is. That, that's yeah. the, the the prototype bad yeah. B movie actor. Yeah. That's who With he is. Four hundred and fifty five movies. I bet he'll do your birthday party if you call him. Absolutely. Folks. We'll take yeah. a break. Come back with the flip side. You, ladies and gentlemen, are listening to the Mike O'Mara show. Whoa, whoa! And uh, thank you, thank you all thank very you. much for listening. And happy holidays as you begin your holidays. <laughs> How would you like to handle all your holiday shopping in just one place? You can hit up the Mike O'Mara Show online store. From legacy t-shirts and cozy hoodies to morning transforming coffee mugs. That's right. You buy our coffee mug. There's a picture of it right there. And it will transform your morning. Better. It makes it better, better. And a chance for you to share your TMOS passion. You can easily give the best merch and make some new fans for your favorite podcast, even if you're just giving a gift to yourself. We've got your back. We hand-select everything for top-tier quality and killer looks. Grab your TMOS gear and support the show you love. Every purchase keeps the laughs coming. We keep it fresh with new items added regularly. Stay ahead of the curve and be the envy of your TMOS crew. TMOSstore.com, the source for all things TMOS. Official, authentic, and awesome. Thank you for your support. It's all happening at TMOSstore.com. Hello. Hi, Julia. Sorry. Mike, tis the season, would you say? Ho, ho, ho. Well, Mrs. O'Mara is a tad uh, addicted to Christmas music. And, oh, uh, I did not know. Well, it was all I could do to get her not to uh, play it prior to Thanksgiving, because that's a thing that's, of mine Thanksgiving that I have. Thanksgiving is my thing, yeah. And, I've not uh, even, Christmas the jukebox yet, so we're not... Even well, after uh, Thanksgiving, when it is on in the house, when there's uh, you know not a television on, which is rare, uh, all the time, it does get... Uh, does she know, listen it, to the current stuff or more old school stuff? I don't know. Does it open up into a larger suite? I don't know. She has it on one of these mini... Uh, speakers. Oh, Bluetooth I say, speaker. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, you got me one for little Christmas. Little tiny one. ones. I so love it's it. This yeah. Tinny rocking around oh, the Christmas. No, the tree. one you got me is great. 
I you just got me realized a bo- that a Bose one, yeah. My my uh, Christmas spirit uh, <laughs> was was thriving right around Thanksgiving because my daughter was coming down. Yeah, I got out with and played golf with her boyfriend. They had good news about their lives together and how things are going, and I was really happy. And my son was in a good mood, and then uh, everybody split. And uh, you know now I have to kind of recharge my batteries to uh, it, yeah. to get in it with uh, you know flag football practice and back to school. I don't know. I, well, it's my, my own deal. I'll work on it. Tis the season for the holidays, but also it seems to be the best time of year for song parodies. I brought you one yesterday. I'd like to bring you one today. Hold on. um, today is National Throw Out Your Leftovers Day. Did you know this? I because know that still- uh, my leftovers were put by the sink <laughs> in Tupperware, which basically should have had a sign that says, Daddy, take care of these. And it was as nasty. It that does. When you take, even if it's been refrigerated, which it was, green bean casserole. Oh, no. And then you go off to work. God bless her, slaying the dragon, supporting me in the way I'd like to become accustomed to. But then I come home and I've got to, you know, pour that puke into the sink. It's, uh, you know, and there's just the exercise of putting away a green bean cat. No one's going to eat that No one revisits it. No one revisits it. You're right. It's nasty. And I'm very happy this has put your leftovers away so you don't get salmonella. So, folks, if you have Thanksgiving leftovers, please get rid of them. Pretty sure the turkey's through. It's turning blue. Don't want it. Salmonella. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> yes. You is, is that the punchline? Is salmonella? That is, instead of my Sharona. All right, salmonella. play it one more time, and then okay. I'll blow it up after that. Okay, All right, here, here we, we go. go. <laughs> Ooh, I'm pretty sure the turkey's through. It's turning blue. Don't want to get another case of salmonella. Bad production values too, Rob. Bad Everything about it values. is horrible, and that's why mm. Mike. That's why it's the season for song parodies. Is there anyone mm. more exciting on television today than Harry Smith? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I don't know why I'm not a fan of Harry. Uh, I think that <laughs> Harry Smith represents to me uh, the type of survivor in the broadcast business that survives due to his blandness yeah I, that's I've always the same thing that. for me that's exactly what i feel mike they gave harry smith the honor of interviewing Cher because not only does she have the christmas record coming out but i would think that a great definition of an oldie is something that's 25 years old if i were to just think of a record that's 25 years old i think of something like maybe from the 60s do you know but, what dolly parton has done for me what's that you're talking about Cher right now, and I'm yeah. just thinking to myself, north of 70 Cher, maybe the same age, maybe close to the same age, yeah, they're 77. Both 70, I like, yeah, in the 70s, sure. I'm th- I, I think Cher could pull off the Dallas Cowboys cheerleader outfit. I, sh- I think she could. Absolutely. 100% with, I mean, her belly button, her belly was the, you yes, know, the whole defining deal. characteristic when she was on TV all the time. But, Mike, Go you ahead. know, it's been 25 years since she recorded Do You Be Leading Life After mm-hmm. Love. Yeah, that great is song. amazing to me that it's 25 years old. Uh, they ask her about that and uh, ask her about Cher being old, and she is not happy about it. How amazing is it that Believe is 25 years old? It's not that amazing, okay? <laughs> it pisses me. It pisses the f- out of me, and you can't put that up. Yes, we can. Okay, good. No, it just is like, what is this? So you and age, not, you're not friends? No, my mother didn't mind, but I do. I yeah. hate it. I had a tough time with 70. I'll admit it. Like, I mean, like, really knocked me in a hole for a while. I'd give anything to be so <laughs> Wow. Cher gives off some crazy great... She is that, great, is she not? Yeah, I mean, you know, we had a thing with her on the old Don and Mike show back in the day. Yeah. And she's fun. And 1989. she's great yeah. as a talk show guest. And she's provocative and all the good things that you want in a celebrity. And, and I have to say, and she's provocative, but in a different way. Then Madonna is pr- provocative, right? Yeah. She's just, it's, th- there's a lovability with Cher that you just a lovable can't. I look outrageousness, at her and I smile. Yeah. You know? It doesn't I mean, seem, Madonna always seems calculated. 
Yeah, yeah, Cher and, just seems to be Cher. And Cher, with the, even being a showbiz, you know, different kind of human being, doesn't have that weird factor that Madonna always seems to have, yeah. you know? Uh, she a, will be uh, tonight. They're lighting up the Rockefeller Christmas tree on NBC, which, remember, used to be the last five minutes of the news. Yeah. Now it's a two-hour special. Uh, it's two hours? Two hours to light yeah. up the Christmas tree. I won't tree be tonight. catching that. Sorry about that. And at 10 o'clock, Mike, Christmas at Graceland. Make sure you DVR that. Oh, you're up on all of them. That's good. Well, you don't care about Halloween, but you still got the Christmas thing <laughs> I going. like a That's little good. bit of Christmas. Let's cut okay. to the last one here, Mac. You know, Oscar's not here today, and I want to play this as a tribute to Oscar as we close. Uh, I like when they take something that has been part of our lives for a long time and make it into something new. And Snyder's of Hanover has done it with a very clever angle. Uh, they want you to not build a gingerbread house. They want you to build a pretzel cabin. So here's one for Oscar. Every holiday season, gingerbread people like little Gavin here are forced to live in houses made of themselves. <laughs> but now you can build them a much more tasteful home with Snyder's of Hanover pretzels. A Snyder's pretzel cabin isn't just delicious. It's the right thing to do. Is it real? Build a tasteful Snyder's of Hanover pretzel cabin. Yeah, you just Is go to their real? website and you tell you how to build a pretzel cabin. And Mike, I'm all in. I because am all Oscar's in. not here, I have to say this. Not the candy cane buttons. Oh, that is fantastic. <laughs> Make them a house of themselves. <laughs> Forced to live in a house made of themselves. That's good. I like that. Hey, we'll be back with a brand new episode tomorrow, everybody. Hey, please, do me a favor. If you're thinking about your weight, go to dermglowskin.com today and check it out. The weight loss do button it. on dermglowskin.com. And you might be setting yourself up for a pretty damn fine 2024 if you Absolutely. do that. It is uh, the season for that. Yes. we got to get out of here. Mac, thanks for the Rubik's Cube. For Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana, Mike O'Mara saying so long, everybody. Ciao, ciao. Want more? Make sure you check out the Mike O'Mara Bonus Show. Get it at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Huh? Christ almighty, it's like I'm sitting here playing cards with my brother's kids or something. You nerve-wracking sons of bitches. Hi, I'm Moira Rose. And if you love fruit wine as much as I do, then you'll appreciate the craftsmanship and quality of a local vintner who brings the muskmelon goodness to his oak chardonnay and the dazzling peach curl bat full to his Riesling Rioja. Oh, you should see what it looks like from out here. <laughs>